Hi, welcome to Two Tall Stitchers, episode number four. I'm Carol, and this is my daughter Jennifer, and we're delighted to have you back again. Thanks for joining us, and if you're new, welcome. We hope you enjoy our channel. We are very glad to be here today. We have a table full of stuff, like usual, I think. <laughs> um, but hopefully you like the new background we have. We thought we'd start and talk a little bit about that. Um, instead of showing all the stuff behind us, we thought it would be fun to put a different quilt behind us each background. And it's warming up, the flowers are blooming. Um, so this is a great quilt. You want to share a little bit? This is mom's quilt, so maybe This is my jelly roll quilt bit. that I made. It was a challenge with my quilt bee. We had one day at work day where we all brought jelly rolls, and this is an example of a jelly roll. It contains usually 40 to 42 strips. It comes very tightly wrapped, and when you unwrap it, it explodes. <laughs> But anyway, um, you, what you do is you sew end to end to end to end, and then you cut it, and then you sew those. It's just crazy, and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of uh, floss tubes on it and everything. We had a blast. The two funny things were one of our members bought her, her um, jelly roll, bought a junior one, but didn't realize it. So everybody else was madly sewing, and she was like, well, I'm done. How come you guys are so slow? Well, hers turned out to be like this wide, okay, and about this tall. <laughs> then there was another one who bought her jelly roll at Walmart and at Walmart they're extremely generous and we were all done and she was still sewing and still sewing and still sewing and hers was huge it was yeah. so big so but we had a lot of fun doing them it was a great kind of fun race and I love it because those are my colors those yeah. are my colors yeah and ours you'll see a couple of different patterns I would say just look for the jelly roll race and we'll try and link a couple of videos below but um, yours, we did diagonal lines instead of sewing the ends together straight, which just gives a little bit more interest. I think there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can put a little one inch strip in between as you join them, but lots of different opportunities. But if you're trying to get good at sewing long straight lines, this, this is, is the pattern for you. As long as you don't fall asleep. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I think now we are going to jump into cross stitch, um, but we'll try and rotate quilts and share a new one with you each time we come. Um, so we have a few kind of updates. We'll answer some questions, um, and then we'll get into all the stuff, stuff on the table, yes. on the floor next to us. So um, first thing we wanted to do is thank a couple of people that we know who shouted us out in recent episodes. Um, so first we'd like to thank Sherry, the Colorado cross stitcher. Um, I think Sherry sits maybe at her dining room table and has all kinds of stuff around her. Um, and one thing I like about her videos at the end, she always has a tip. So um, the one I really enjoyed, one of her early videos, she showed different stretches to do for your oh, hands. Sure. Um, she's a knitter and a cross stitcher so that you don't get cramps in your hands. And I think about that every time now um, and try and do a couple of those stretches. Um, Can you show us a couple quickly? Uh, yeah, I mean, the one she showed was uh, start with a tight fist and then push your fingers all the way out. She One yep. thing she also said that I remember is when she sleeps, she never balls up her hands because they're so balled up from the stitching and the knitting. So she always sleeps with her hand, not always flexed, her, but, best of her but with her hands straight. Right. Um, right. Yeah, so the other one, we do this one at work for ergonomics, is you can do like a prayer position and you have to try and hold your um, palms together and push down at the same time. So that's a good stretch for your for your upper arm. So those are a couple stretches. So thanks for the tip, Sherry. We're yes. glad to share them. Hope they help all of you. Yes, and she has more. So go take a look at her, some of her early videos, one or two, I think. Um, thank you also to Debbie at Creatively Yours. Um, Debbie is a floss tuber from, I think, the Netherlands. And uh, it was really fun to hear her mention our name <laughs> on our episode. Um, and then third, we'd like to thank Liz at Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. We found out that uh, we are both tall stitchers, and it's funny, somebody had commented and said that Liz mentioned us, and I hadn't watched the episode yet, and then she was filming and talking, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, she was talking about her boyfriend and said, he's 5'10", and I was like, this is it! <laughs> and it was! <laughs> and she mentioned two tall stitchers, so hi, Liz, another tall stitcher. Um, 
So thanks again to all of you, and uh, thanks to all of our new subscribers. We have now passed 2,000, yes. which is crazy. Thank you, thank you. Um, and that means we'll have a little giveaway a little bit later. Yeah, but, so stick uh, around. Speaking of 2,000, you had somebody oh, who was quite impressed. <laughs> I was talking to my middle grandson the other day, who was the same age as the princess. And in the course of conversation, I said to him, I said, well, you know, I said, Aunt Jen and I have started a floss tube. And he said, what's that, Grandma? <laughs> I said, well, I said, we talk about our cross-stitching and quilting and everything. He said, really? I said, it's called Two Tall Stitchers. And the next thing I know, he's going, you have 8,000 views. And I said, yes. We were FaceTiming, so it was really fun to watch his face. And I said, yeah, I think we do. And he said, and you've got 2,000 subscribers? I said, yeah. He said, well, you know, when Foss, when you hit a million, YouTube sends you a silver black. <laughs> I said, well... No, 100,000. 100,000. Yeah. And I said, Colin, I don't think we're going to get to 100,000. That'll be quite a... He said, I didn't realize there was a market for this. Do you know you have 8,000 views? <laughs> and you have 2,000 stitchers? And I said, yes, yes, Colin, I do. <laughs> so anyway, hi, Colin. He said he was going to subscribe, so I hope he did. Yeah, very good. Um, and he's on his phone a lot, so you yeah. know, he'll probably see it when it comes up. So hi, Colin. All right, well, let's jump into questions that we had, most of them from our last video, but a few from the others. We also had our bonus video, so if you haven't seen that, we had a short little video with my daughter, also known as the princess. Um, she had a good time, and she said, I guess I need to finish some things now so I can come back and show them to your viewers. So she will be back. Um, but we have a Don't bunch... Don't hold your breath. Don't <laughs> well, hold your breath. It won't be any time soon. No. Um, but we had a bunch of questions. So first we're gonna start with Ginger. And first of all, Ginger, we wanna say thank you. And um, there were a few others who gave us tips on how to clean up dog puke because mom mentioned at the very end of the episode that that's what she would be doing later that day. And it helped, thank you. <laughs> um, so Ginger wanted to know what direction we stitch in and could we show the back of a piece? And I think we both stitch the same way. We stitch, we, we, are not, we don't stitch in hand most of the time, unless maybe we're doing it on something stiff like Ada. But um, I usually use the uh, rods and the frame that we've shown before. And I will use a hoop sometimes if the piece is small enough that I can get the hoop where it won't pull over the stitches. I don't like it to do that. But I stitch right to left unless I'm stitching with fancy floss like Weeks Dye Works or Sampler Thread or one of those. And then I do a full X, but I still go right to left. Sometimes mm -hmm. I jump around a little bit. It yeah. depends on, you know, where we're going. But yeah. uh, basically we stitch right to left and... Yeah. and uh, side to side. Side to side. Back and forth. Some people stitch from phase. the bottom up, which I cannot... Com yeah. Oh, I just can't imagine that. Yeah. But Okay, and so as a treat, I'm going to show you the back of one of the things I'm currently working on. And I think it's pretty neat. <laughs> I don't yeah. do a lot of jumping around. Um, I try to uh, um, finish up, you know, where I am and everything. And that way, when you're finishing it, you don't have to worry about maybe threads breaking or stretching or something yeah. like that. And I do the same thing. I would say until probably the last year or so, I always started in the middle of the piece because that's how you taught me. Right. You find the middle, right. you start there, and then you work your way up or down. Um, in recent months, I have started sometimes stitching at the top left, and then I'll right. go kind of across and down if I'm confident that it will all yeah. fit. So, yeah. yeah, so that's how we both stitch. And you saw that when I was doing the um, spring ABCs and how I started three inches down and I had that much left on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's at the framer and it'll be fine. It, it yeah. made it through and I did sew muslin on the bottom, so we'll be okay. All right, the next question was from Terry, and then we have another one. Um, I'll find her name in a minute. And they asked, could we do a demo of back stitching or a demo of pin, pin stitching? stitching. Two of them, uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Um, and uh, yes, we will try and do that in the not the next few weeks, but we will as soon definitely. As we can do a video when we can and we'll get the camera set up so you can see us and maybe we'll do each of us because I'm sure we do things just a little yes. bit differently yes. um, but we'll show you that but Jacqueline your question on the pin stitch was how to keep it taut and I think when I do it um, I don't pull real tightly I pull just tight enough for the stitch to lay flat but then I don't tug anymore and then I'll do the X over it so hope that helps um, and I will say I think it does better in some fabrics compared to others, like the pin stitch lays a little nicer. So some of it depends on the linen that you're using. 
Um, Lucy wants to know, <laughs> how do we store our DMC? Are you ready? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> okay, what I do is I have probably, I won't even dare to count, but I've got all my floss, my DMC, on rings, and it's numerical. So when I want one, I get to go through this bag of unmentionable numbers, and I just pull and pull and pull until I find the right grouping, and then I check, and yeah. I usually don't have it. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. even with that bag full of floss, there there have been how many times lately I've called Jennifer? Yeah. You know, like it. Yeah. Nine, ten. Okay, Michael's is closed. Do you have this number? Yeah. <laughs> and it's really aggravating. I mean, when I'm stitching at 11 o'clock at night, it's aggravating that I can't find some shop that will sell me the color I want. <laughs> So I do the exact same thing. I have my floss in a red bag, though, instead of a white bag. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, and Lucy also wanted to know, do we hand quilt or piece? No. no. We don't. We both bind by hand, although I'm doing less and less of that. Me too. Um, you know, it's funny. People always say to me, oh, you're so patient that you can quilt, and you're so patient that you can stitch. And I'm like, it's not really about patience. It's more about persistence because I think, and I know some people love the hand quilting just like we love stitching, um, but for us, we both like the speed We're of not, a machine yeah. um, and we both like machine quilting. I have a long arm um, and you have lots of sewing machines. Um, so we have plenty of machines and we also have several friends who quilt and so. She has more than one machine too, don't let her fool you. Yeah, that's true. Not as many as you though. <laughs> Three. I only have three. Four. Four. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Um, anyway. <laughs> so, yes, we, we pretty much do everything by, by machine. Um, okay, Carolina Girl wanted to know, on your X-Stitch app, which you talked about the last time, do you use free or the two ninety nine version? I use the free one, and it's really good. And it really helps when you're in the cross stitch shop and you think you may have a pattern if you actually look at it. Because then I wouldn't have bought two patterns lately. Yes. So it's very handy. All right. And then Lori had a question for me on my two pieces I had framed at Michael's last time. Do they lace, pin, or staple? Um, I don't know. I, I did not look. I didn't take it apart. I didn't ask. Um, it is tightly connected. I don't think they lace. I don't lace. think they lace. My guess would be that it's pinning. Um, or taping. Or taping, yeah. I think they tape. Yeah, but. That's faster. I, I'm pleased with the two that I had done. I have heard other people say they're not happy. I think it's totally dependent on the framers at your right. Michaels. Right. So it's worth taking something in and checking it out to see how they do. Um, but we know everybody won't have that same good experience like yeah. I had. Yeah. yeah. And if you have a Hobby Lobby near you, I've had a lot of luck with the Hobby Lobby yeah. framers. Yeah. They've been really nice, and um, they will cut mats for you and stuff like that, which I think yeah. Michaels will do too. Yeah, and we do not have any framing in our Joann's anymore. So for us, if not we want to get something framed, it's, it's a Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Um, or out or, to Avon or over. To or other places, yeah. 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 Okay. And right. then a uh, question on your Christmas rules. Are you using the called for colors, and would it fit on a an 18 by 27 a fat quarter piece of linen I am using the call for colors I'm really pleased with that I'll show it to you in a bit as a, a whip which it won't, it won't be hopefully too much longer and according to the pattern um, I'm looking at the you know it comes like this right yeah. and then but on the back they show you if it's all together and it says here all together on a 32 count the stitch count is 85 wide by 358 high and the frame that they have it in here is seven by 24. So if you did it on an 18 by 27 piece, 18 would be fine, but 27 you'd be really, you'd be like me with the muslin on the bottom and the right. muslin on yeah. the top. I would recommend trying to find a longer piece. Yeah, yeah. And I think when you show yours, you'll mention the fabric again. And, yeah. and we do know that Diana at Fancy Works as of a couple weeks ago, yeah. did have another Had piece another of piece. that fabric that she could cut long enough for that. Um, okay, and then the next question Patty asked about 
the pattern for my shopping bag. So I'll just show this again. This is the little bag I showed you last time that I like to take shopping. Open it up. And um, inside it has a zipper pocket on one side with vinyl and a Velcro pocket on the other side. And I absolutely love it. And the pattern is by a company called This and That, and it is called Tag Along number 215. So here's a picture of the pattern. And I just kind of laugh when I look at this because like with those colors, it looks so different to me. So I'm, I like mine in the, the very bright colors, but it's a good example of, you know, both in the stitching world and the quilting world, you can, you can change all the colors. Um, you can make adjustments like if you wanted two zipper sides you could easily do that with this pattern So it's a good one. I have made several this and that patterns, and I think they do a nice job with their patterns Okay um, We yeah, I have been to stitch and frame in Fort Wayne Jennifer has not we've talked about going but of course with COVID you don't go very far anywhere and they're just starting to open up and so hopefully we'll be able to get up there yeah. one day soon yeah, I'm they do have they it. do have a good selection of patterns and fabric, and they've done some framing for me, which I've been very pleased with. Yeah. Okay. The next question the was challenge. from Kathy. She asked, "What ruler did you use okay. for the challenge?" This was the pattern I made. This was the what does it say? Shining stars. Mm -hmm. It's hard to read backwards. And this is the ruler. It's called Triangle in Squares Ruler. It's a, uh, a quilt there. in a day from Quilt in a Day. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's small and it's fun. And um, I was gonna, I didn't take it out of the package now, I'm in trouble. But um, <laughs> it comes in two pieces. This is, this is one Wait, piece. I don't know. Can you get it? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this is the other piece there. That shows pretty well. Yeah. So it comes in two segments and you use them both. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's something I just bought thinking, oh, I'll use this. And of course, you know how that goes. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next question is from Cindy. Where do we hold our retreats? So um, our stitch retreat is held in Westfield. Whitestown. Whitestown, sorry. Whitestown, Indiana, which is five minutes north of Mom's house. Um, we go to a Hampton Inn, and we have uh, a comp their conference room there. We can fit about 30 stitchers. Um, we are full for this year right now. Um, but if we have any openings, we will we'll post it first probably on Instagram. So if you follow us on Instagram, you would see it there and you could um, get your name in. But uh, more than likely, we'll talk about a second retreat for next year so we can open it up to some more people. Okay, um, and then the last question we have is whether Jenna is a tall stitcher too and where do our looks come from? No, is the answer for Jenna. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, we need to put her on stretcher bars because she's not grown nearly enough. <laughs> Jennifer is, my, my sister was 5'10 or 5'11. I'm yeah. 6 feet. Um, you I'm 5'11. You're 5'11. And then Jenna comes in at what, 5'7? 5'6. 5'6. And I'm yeah. like, we got to do something with you. Eat more Wheaties or put you on a stretcher bar. So we're going to get her taller. Don't worry. We'll work on it. And our looks, we're basically um, Eastern European, Western, Western European, Northern, German, yeah. German, and English, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. At least a little on bit my of, side. A little bit of French on my dad's side. Yeah. Um, and then Jenna has all of that, plus a little bit of um, Irish and Swedish from my husband. So um, so that's where we, that's a, where we get our looks. a bunch of busy people going all yeah. over the place. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then... Just a couple of follow-ups from previous questions. We've had people answer the questions, and so we wanted to share those with you as well. So we had a lot of questions about where can you get the Heinzet patterns, and Stitch in My Stash said she took a look, and a lot of them were available at 123 Stitch. Um, so thank you. You can look over there. Um, the frames, like or the Easy Stitch frames, like Mom just showed that we stitch on, there's a lot of chatter <laughs> in our comments from the last video about people who've used the Velcro and like it. Somebody found the ones with the sew on. Um, so if you're interested more in those frames, go back and look in those comments because you'll see kind of reviews from people who have used the Velcro ones and also where you might be able to find them. And then um, we also got several comments on easy beginner quilt patterns. We stumbled a little bit on that. <laughs> um, but these are all places where you can find either 
YouTube videos or you can go to a website and look at videos. People recommend a Missouri Star Quilt Company, which we agree with. We've done yes. some of their patterns. Yes. Um, Lori Holt patterns. I don't think either of us has made no. a Lori Holt. Mm -mm, but, I have not. Um, and then Fat Quarter Shop tutorials as well. So I think with all that, um, we will jump into the stitches. Yeah. All right. So we'll start with our whips and our new starts. I have a bunch you because go it is Stitch Mania and I am having a great time playing along. It was a busy week. It's the first week I've had a lot of stuff going on in over a year. And of course it all happens in the same week. You guys know how that happens. Everything gets uh, set up for the same week. Um, we got new floors in a good part of our downstairs. So we moved everything into the front room in the house and all four of us hung out, ate there, watched TV there, and I stitched every single day. I also worked every single day. That one I moved upstairs for. Um, but it was a busy week, but I am super excited to be doing Stitch Mania. Um, but before May started, I had some stitching in April. So these are all things that you've seen before. Uh, oh no, one of them is new. Um, so first we'll start with my Jan Lynn, I think it's called Holiday Wishes, and I am working on that little snowman. Um, it has been my lunchtime piece until Mania started, and I made good progress. Last time I showed you all I had stitched was white, and this time I finished off his hat. I got to put in eyes, a nose, a mouth, cheeks, and the beautiful thing is I still have some white to fill in here, but it, it literally is just fill in now, so you don't have to pay that much attention. Um, the other thing is I figured out, I told you guys I was off one row at the bottom and I figured it out and I think I should pretty easily be able to, I can't remember if I have to add a row or remove a row, but I'll just take it off the bottom and it'll all work out. So I was very glad it wasn't in this part where it was cut in for the hat that I was off. So I didn't have to take out, you know, all of that. Below. You'll make it work. Yes. So happy with him and he gets, um, another uh, row here to finish the square and then a bunch of back stitching to make everything pop. So that's that one. Um, and then second, I showed you this last time. This is Star Spangled Birthday. And um, Maria let me know, I called it, I think I called it pulled thread last yeah. time, that she said I should call this counted canvas. So thanks Maria. Um, and then Becky asked how it was different than cross stitch. So hopefully this time when you see it, you can see a little bit better. I worked on this for a solid weekend. I told myself um, starting on Friday night, this is going to be all that I worked on for the weekend. And it was great. I made a lot of progress. I had a lot of good stitching time. And so this is my progress to date. I love that blue. It has so much variability in it. And you'll see that she has to pin it because it's a hard canvas onto a yeah. wooden frame. Yeah, it is not it's back. not on a um, a, a yeah. scroll or anything else. So when you're doing this, yeah. this is more like needlepoint. It is, yeah, and it goes really fast compared to cross stitch because you, what you're doing and and this is how it's different from cross stitch is you're not making X's. You're generally only going in one direction, but you can see sometimes you're going up to the left, sometimes you're going up to the right sometimes over one, sometimes over a couple. So um, there still is a lot of counting. You still have to pay a lot of attention, but um, it goes really quickly once you get started. And all those little pieces will come out. Those all are just these. her threads to hold her. Yeah, waist, so, they're called waist, waist knots, knots. And then you just stitch over that thread and once you've stitched over it, then you just cut your knot and you're done. Um, and I don't do that on cross stitch because I think it could pull the linen, but because this is so stiff, it's not going to pull and tug. Um, yeah, so that's my Star Spangled Birthday. I'm having a fun time stitching on that one, but I, I don't think I'll turn into a count of canvas stitcher. I think I like the cross stitch a little bit more. Um, and then the next one I worked on before May is Welcome to the Lake from Heinzit, and this one has 17 colors in each of the letters here, which is a lot. Now, I think it looks pretty good at the end, 
um, but it's a lot of thread changes. So I'll show you this first and then I'll show you the little tool that I'm using to help. So here is two AK. So I could just say to Alaska, right? <laughs> Be done with this. Um, so there's my two letters. Uh, I think last time I had finished the K and this time I finished the A and the two. Um, and this one I've decided like when I work on it, I'm going to get a certain number of letters done. Um, but like I mentioned, 17 uh, different colors in each letter. And so I pulled out something I've had in my stash a long time. It's called a low ran uh, needle holder card and you can get this at your stitch shops they used to sell them at the big box stores as well um, but I haven't looked for them recently I, I don't think know they still if have you them. have um, but what you do is you thread as many needles as you need to and then on the little line here you mark what number it is I'm doing all of that in pencil because um, as my best friend likes to tell me, I'm cheap, and, <laughs> and that way I can use it again. Um, and then you leave your needle threaded, so you don't have to take the time to re-thread for each of the 17 And this colors. is a magnetic strip, so that's how the needles stay on. She's yeah. not magic or anything. <laughs> well, yeah. kind of magic, but um, I mean, I am like working and all that yeah, stuff. Right. Anyway, um, <laughs> So, so yeah, and I really like it. It's, um, I don't have enough spaces for all 17. So kind of what I'm doing is if I have thread left at the end, I'm putting it on. If I don't, then there's nothing really to put on there. I'm not threading up the next one, but, um, I did this as I stitched the last letter. So I haven't stitched a letter from this yet. So I'm hoping that the next letter will go a little bit faster. And then... Um, my third project I worked on both in um, March and April, sorry, I probably worked on it in March too, um, and it was my first whip for Stitch Mania. So maybe we'll talk about what we're doing for Stitch Mania real quick and then I'll show this. Well, you can show it and then... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is called Charting a Course. It is a Janlin kit it's and I got it at a... Stitcher's garage sale at House of Stitches two years ago. Maybe we drove yeah, up there for two. the day with a friend um, and had a good time, both in the shop buying new stuff and at the Stitcher's garage sale. And so this was a kit. It came with the linen or the Ada. Yeah. It came with all the threads and a, um, needle. a needle. And so it's it's big. I've worked on it twice now. There it is, and I love it. So I started show at the, them the back because the back looks at, really. I'll good. show them the back in a second. I started at the lighthouse and I did kind of this hall part first, and then I moved up. And once I was up here, I decided, oh, I should probably do some of the back stitching um, while I'm up there, so I don't leave all the back stitching for the end. So now I'm working my way down. This is what I worked on the last couple times I did it. The um, land over here and I connected all the blues together and then the grays which will be rocks and I've I'm, I've got three out of four corners that I've touched now there's still a fair amount left here but it's gonna be like this section or like this section that's all half cross so it's just one way it goes a lot faster and it's um, not solid it's not solid right and so um, hopefully a couple more. I usually stitch on this one a week at a time, so hopefully like two more weeks and I'll be done with this. But I like it and then when I'm stitching on it and then when I take a picture or I look at it far away, I love it. It's so, beautiful. It's yeah. really pretty. Yeah, really, really pretty. Really pretty. And then per my mom's request, I will show you the back of this as well. So... A little more, I, I've probably traveled on this one a little more than I usually do. Um, and some of that, again, Ada is a really sturdy fabric, so I don't feel like it's going to pull or bunch if I travel yeah. where linen might. Okay, I still have a couple more, but why don't you show what okay. you've been working on. Okay, um, now you get to see the front. This is the cottage... Country Cottage Needleworks. This is the first one, January. Um, I decided I would do that for my mania. 
and I would work on it for three days and then I didn't have all the floss so I kept working on it and then the floss came and I've gotten this far and it's more than three days because I can't stop sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. bad. I, I, I have enough going on. I had a couple I was going to try and put some stitches in to show you but I really enjoyed working on this and it's quick and it's fast and, and it's going well so yeah. I may just finish it for But mania. you kind of decided that for Mania, yeah. you would focus on stitch every day. Yeah. And your country credits, you know, works. Right. So right. rather than starting all of them, maybe, yes. and not finishing any, you'll finish January and then move on. And then to the other one. night when I was looking for something that I have misplaced, that I'm really aggravated about, um, I couldn't find it, but I was looking through other stuff, and I was like, oh, I want to do that one. Oh, I want to do that one. And I'm like, you can't start 17 things. You've got to get some of these finished. You know, otherwise she's going to have to finish them all when I kick the bucket, and she's going to yeah. be busy. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> but, because I'll come back and haunt her. Yeah. Okay, and this is, um, this is my uh, Christmas Rules by Lizzie Kate, and I finished the no pouting, and then I was like, okay, I finished that segment. Well, the other, next one isn't too bad, so I finished that one. And then I was like, oh, but then if I finish this one, I finished the whole booklet. So now I'm on the third one. Yeah. And so this is part of my mania. Is How in far my mind. down on you, are you? I About have, halfway? No, no, no. When I finish um, Share Your Toys, then I just have two more two pamphlets more. left. For, All right. So that's what's kind of driving me. I really would like to and get it done. And we always get a question on the fabric for that it's one. The, it's 32 count. Crystal Jade. Crystal Jade, I believe. Yeah. And that came from Fancy Works. Okay. So those are kind of your two That's it. Mania projects, yeah. and you're going to continue to rotate them and work Probably. on Probably, yeah. Okay, good. And then somewhere I'll try and start a Christmas ornament. Yeah. Because I have a good reason, which I'll show you in a little bit when we talk to Hall. <laughs> okay. Um, and then what I decided to do for Mania is I did want some new starts, but I also wanted to continue to make progress on the things I just showed you and one other whip that I have. I only have five active whips, and so I thought if I did five whips and five new starts, that takes 30 days. So I'll do three days each. Um, and so I'm alternating a new start, then a whip, a new start, then a whip. So my first one was a new start, and I bought this pattern a while back. Um, it's called Goody Grimwood from Plum Street Samplers, and I, I'm not normally a big Plum Street fan, but this one, I just like the colors. I like the house there. I really love fall and Halloween stuff, so I picked that up, and lo and behold, I had everything for it. And I am stitching this. This is my very first time to stitch on 40 count. This is Stars Hollow. Um, and I think it's the called for by R&R &R Reproductions. Um, and so I am stitching one thread over two. And wait, is that the, yeah, that's the right direction. Um, so this is what I got done in my three days. It was over a weekend. I was really glad it was over a weekend. Um, and yeah. I am really enjoying the stitching on 40 count. I've heard so many people say that over the years. Um, and I'm glad I tried it because it's a lot of fun. It is small. I use a magnifying, magnifying light. Yeah. Um, and it is right under that magnifying light and I have my glasses on when I stitch so um, that's the way I can do 40 count but I'm having fun with that but that will clearly take a while it it goes it goes okay but it doesn't look like a lot because it's she told me she says, I really stitched count. a lot but it doesn't show but it doesn't show yeah. yeah and then so that was my first project my second project was my lighthouse that I just showed you so that was my whip and I worked on that during the week this week and then yesterday, I got my second new start, and this was a gift my mom gave me for Christmas, and it is the, uh, the tag says Joy Reindeer. Rovaris doesn't name their pattern, so that's not an official name, but um, you can see there are two options, and I'm going to stitch mine with the Joy in red. Um, on this one, I am doing it on some of the fabric I bought from crossstitchingsupplies.com. So this is a 32 count um, vintage country mocha. And I got a little start on that yesterday, and then I stitched a little bit more on it this morning. So I have the antlers done, a couple of holly leaves, and that's the very start of the reindeer's head. 
And for this one, I'm doing some of the called for colors and then um, where I didn't have a called for color, I just pulled out threads from my stash that would match. So I didn't feel yeah. like like buying new ones for this and I knew you can find a good red, a good green, a good brown. Um, so I have the rest of today and tomorrow to stitch on that one. So I'm looking forward to it. Yep. All right, so that's all my Let me just say, uh, I think she did the same thing I did. She said she stitched this morning. I took my husband for his COVID shots a few weeks ago, and of course you can't go in with them. And you took Jenna this morning yeah. for her first one, and so I packed up my stitching and took it. And because between getting checked in, getting the shot, and waiting 15 minutes, you've got about 30 minutes to stitch, yeah. and it's uninterrupted. And if you don't answer your phone, you can get a lot done. Yeah, a little different when you're going in with a minor because you do. Oh, you have to go. You in. do have to go oh, in with okay. them when they're a minor. Um, but uh, I took a book. I'm reading a good book, so I got I got a couple chapters in. Okay, so that's all of our whips, our new starts. Um, finishes, I did not have any finishes in the last three weeks. But as we told you in the beginning, since we're this is new and you haven't seen any of our stuff, we can kind of supplement <laughs> and we can sneak in things that we finished a while back and <laughs> you won't know the difference. Yeah. But now you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought a, um, a couple of so ones that I've finished before. And I think, again, we both do this. We kind of decorate our patriotic stuff from Memorial Day to Labor Day. So it comes out. It's not just out for Fourth of July, but it's really out for all summer. So I started um, looking around. I had to take down all my spring stuff when we were getting the floors done. So I started pulling out some of the um, patriotic stuff to put out in a couple of weeks. So the first one, this is a cute little kit from Sam Sarah called Old Glory. And it's a little tiny piece. I got this at um, the shop in Evansville, Stitches from the Heart in oh, yeah. Evansville, Indiana. Um, she may still have stuff. The store is packed with patterns, yes. uh, a lot of patterns. So if you're looking for this and you can't find it somewhere else, I would recommend a call to Stitches from the Heart. Um, and it came with the linen and then a little baggie that had, you know, just cuts of thread. So there's, there's and probably, the star. and the star. Yeah. There's probably not enough there to do another one, but, um, you could at least get started. And then I found the little frame for it as well. Not at the same place. Just, I looked works. into it at Fancy, Fancy works. works. Yeah. yeah. She's got some so, good frames. There's my little old glory. Um, and this one is small. The frame is about three by three. So it's a little tiny piece, but I really like it. And I did frame this one myself. Yeah. Um, and then the other one I have, I can't show you the pattern because it's just the pattern, but it is called Liberty Stars. And this was a freebie at Keepsakes Cross Stitch in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. We've gone to Cincinnati a couple times and we love to add a stop at Keepsakes. Um, and this is stitched on 30 count Weeks Dye Works Confederate Gray. Very simple with Turkish Red and Weeks Turkish Red and Gentle Arts Uniform Blue. I think I might have substituted that blue. That doesn't sound like the right um, color. But this one, I actually remember I took it when I went to see my friend Beth and stitched on it when we, we get together and have stitching weekends. So I stitched on this uh, during the weekend when we weren't out running around. So this one is just a little long pillow um, with a nice uh, navy blue on the back. And again, it's called Liberty Stars. And if you stop by Keepsakes, you can ask if they still have that as a freebie. Okay, this one I did, and unfortunately I do not remember the name, but it came, as it was a kit and it came with this little pillow and you just had to do the the stitching inside and then put it together. It was really easy. Cute. Not hard at all. So, and that that usually hangs on the doorknob into my bathroom so that people can shut it in the door frame. And then this is from this is not seasonal appropriate, but it's the only thing I could reach with the the ironing board and the quilt <laughs> and in the, the way quilt. this morning. Yeah. But this is my my Halloween uh, guy I love him I think he's so cute again I don't know the pattern I made this years ago I've been here 18 I bet years this is an old leisure arts it might be yeah it might be yeah but I made it so long ago I I don't know but I love it I think it's cute and it's it's on the yeah. rods and you just did a little cording to hang yeah it, it was really it was cute. fun yeah yeah so he hangs around at Halloween I like him yeah 
Yeah. And then this is not Halloween, but it is patriotic. Um, I made this on my embroidery machine. And I made one for Jennifer, and I made one for my daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. Susan, and I made one for me, and it took an inordinate amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would just be, oh yeah, not yeah, a problem. Whip well, them together. Took, took quite a while, but it was worth it in the end. I really They're was really pleased cute. with the way they turned out. Yeah. So I do use my embroidery machine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then yeah. other stuff. Oh, wait, that... wait, wait. One more, oh. one more, one more. Oh, yeah. And then I did get busy this week, and I made a project bag which I yeah. thought was nice and cheery for the season. And then also we are in an online group and one of the women in the group had said if people would make her some blocks, she would be willing to put them together into uh, quilts for children. There's a charity she supports. So I just made up two quick blocks. And so I will send them off to her. Um, they're cute. Yeah. I like the colors. Yeah. So they're bright Stars. and cheery. Yeah. They're for kids. And so, yeah. yeah. So that's my, my actual... Something yeah, I did. And then, um, yeah, we're kind of in the quilting space. So, do you want to share your other quilting project oh, yeah. that you finished, and then I'll okay, share yeah. the one I finished? And then, I made a purse, and I love it. I love that middle fabric. Yeah, yeah. it's a really easy pattern, and of course, I don't have it in front of me. We'll link it in the description. We'll link it in the description box. Uh, but it's really nice because it's got six big pockets inside. Mm -hmm. And it holds a ton of crap. And it's full. <laughs> and then I am working on a couple of baby quilts. And I got one of them finished. And I'll grab oh, that. thank you. We had something fly off the table. And so I'm making, these are for twins. So each twin will get a quilt, but they are different. So this one okay. is... Um, Cows. Horses. Uh, horses. Yep. And so this is a rag quilt. It's the first time I've done a rag quilt and you wind up snipping it all when you're done. And then on the back, I bet it's the last too. Yeah, probably <laughs> actually on the back, it's green and yellow. So I'll, um, I'll probably insert a picture of this at the end so you can see the whole thing. I laid it down on the floor to take a picture. Um, I'm making these for my aunt to give to her nieces, and nephew's children on the other side of the family. Um, so I put it on the floor to take a picture of it when I finished it and the dog promptly sat down on it in my house. So I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll insert that picture so you can see the quilt and also uh, see Grace. And now, yeah, now you've got, thre you have yeah, threads too. Yeah, we're covered. That's the only thing okay. about rag quilts. Lots yeah. of threads, yeah. but it's cute. Yeah. Um, and that is from a Quilts and More pattern. And I will again, share the information in the description about the pattern in the magazine. So now I think we're ready to go on to oh. haul. But before we talk about what we bought, I actually won two things. It's kind of exciting. Two. So, oh, yeah. You yeah. Did. So in the last couple of weeks, um, Stephanie on Instagram at one, two, stitch a few, um, shared up some patterns. She was doing some past the stash, and I thought this one looked really nice. And she said, just comment if you're interested. And then she would pull one, and she pulled my name. So this is Let Freedom Ring by Lil. Lila's studio. I think it's Lila and not Lila. I've heard other people say that. Um, so this one is going to be a big piece, but I'm really looking forward to it. I lived in Philadelphia for a few months when I was in college um, and loved it. And I lived really close to Independence Hall. And then she also included a couple strands of oh, she sent that. Oh, um, nice. Calico Kitty that I think are used the in buildings. Independence Hall. So Stephanie, if you're watching, thank you. I love it. I'm so excited to stitch that. And then the second thing I won last week on the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch podcast, uh, Chelsea was calling out the names of the winners, and she called out two tall stitchers. <laughs> and, I, and we were like, wait, that's she called me. She's like, it's one of us. Um, so that one I won. The Autumn Medley by Heart and Hand. And so they had a stitcher who sent them a bunch of her stash to give away. Um, it came with the buttons and also with, um, this looks like an even weave uh, to stitch it on. So I'm excited to stitch that one too. I think it's really cute. So that was my winnings. And then we both did a little shopping. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching Georgia Girl Stitching 
and she was talking about how she'd ordered some floss from Color and Cotton, which I've never used before. And she said, and it really wasn't too bad because some of the colors, when they discontinue them, they mark them down. So, of course, you know, that was an open invitation. So I ordered five strands of floss. And they go uh, well with the quilt in yeah. your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that, that I yeah. can't hold things. All right. Um, they're really, really pretty. Yeah. I love the colors. I love the colors. And yeah. as you can tell, blue is my favorite color. So <laughs> I got those. And then um, I got a call from my cross-stitch shop, Persnickety, that the June sampler for the Country uh, Cottage Needleworks was in. That's why I'm working on January, because June is here and I should get my act together. <laughs> and then I was down at Jennifer celebrating Jenna's birthday since she turned 16. I don't know how that happened. Um, when she has such a young mother and such a young grandmother. <laughs> but um, Jennifer was looking and said, I said, what are you doing? She said, well, Sulky has their, their, their threads on sale and I'm ordering some. And I said, oh, I put that one in trash. So of course I came home, got it out of trash. And then this is what I got. So I got this color. I can't remember the, the color ways, but I know one of them is uh, that one. Oh, they say and, on the back. Oh, so say, this oh, one okay. is the Christmas sampler. Okay. Okay, and this is the summer sampler, mm -hmm. and then this is the most popular color. So this is the cotton petite. You only have to use one strand, and so my thought was that when I uh, pull out some Christmas ornaments, instead of using DMC, I'm going to try these, because that's small, and it would go quickly, and then I could tell if I like it or not, Yeah, which I'm afraid I will. And then, uh, since you know she was buying them after I was buying them, that's my haul to share too. So I got two of them. I got the Crafty Gemini favorites. And so they're all purple, pink, tealy greens. Love these colors. You I notice have... none of mine have purple. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to stitch on this, but I love it. And then I also got the... Um, cotton blendable petites most popular colors so i think i don't know what the difference is between our most popular colors because i think see. they're different uh, yeah yeah mine are all variegated and i oh, think yours okay. are solid. Mine are solids yeah that's yeah. The difference. yeah 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 okay. so this is fun we'll have to find some projects to stitch those on and then i also went to michael's and many of you have seen these um wooden blocks that uh, the housewives have been using for their um, ornaments. Finishing. They're finishing. So I picked up one of these. Um, they have green, red, black, and blue. They did not have all four at our Michaels when I was there. Um, but I knew I had a few things that had green. I also thought it would be good for summery things yeah, or Christmassy Christmas. things. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's ready to go. Um, and then they had the it was the very end of the Easter clearance, so I got a couple of ribbons um, just to add to my ribbon stash for finishing. I really like that one with the, yeah, the that's carrots with on the carrots, it. Yeah, really that's really cute. cute. So that's all the stash, I think. And she has more ribbon than I do. Uh -huh. Yeah, I do. I keep buying it. Okay. Is that everything? I think for now. For I what's think, on the first page. Yes. Okay. So... Um, we mentioned before we would have a giveaway for our 2,000 subscribers. Um, so just like last time, we'll have three things. And the way that you'll enter the giveaway is you'll be a subscriber. You'll like the video. You will not use giveaway, freebie, winner, win, any Prize, of those giveaway, words. Yeah, nothing like that. Because we want actual stitchers or sewers to win these prizes. Um, and you'll use the keyword that we tell you. Um, but we thought it would also be fun to give you a question if you just want to throw the keywords out there. Um, or your questions were fantastic yeah. last time. Your keywords, we're not giving yeah. away wine, but still, <laughs> yeah. your, your statements so, were wonderful. Um, so if you want to answer a question, we thought it would be fun since we've had so many people mention that they're tall as well. If you are tall or you know a tall woman, um, share great places to buy tall clothes. So that's one then we can all read through the comments and see where everybody likes to buy their tall clothes. If you're not tall, um, then we want to hear about how you watch us. Do you watch on an iPhone or a phone, on iPad. a tablet? Do you stream it to your TV? Um, we're just curious about, about different ways that people watch. So we have three items. 
Um, the first one is this uh, Mill Hill kit. This is just the front of it, but it is the full kit with the beads, the, um, the everything, pin, the needles, the, pin the pins. Back, the needles, yep, and it is floss. from Spring Bouquet 2. And so for, if you're interested in this one, you're going to use the word spring in your comment. Um, if you haven't tried beading before, those little mill holes are a great, great way to get into it. And beading. you get two needles. You get one for the stitching and one for, one the, for the beading. beading. Yeah. So you don't have to get an extra needle. Yeah. And then our second prize is um, a charm pack. And this is called Harriet's Handwork, 1820 to 1840. And I'll just flip through some of those. You get some reds, some creams. Um, and uh, this would be great if you're a quilter. You could obviously do some quilting with this. If you're not, you could use this for finishing. So this would be good to... Um, you know, if you want to fabric frame something or you want to put it on a picture frame and then a small piece in front of it. So this is um, going to be the keyword Harriet, H-A-R-R-I-E-T. So if you're interested in the fabric. And then number three. Number three is the project bag. I really had fun making it and it was a good it was a lot of fun we won't get into how long it took me to put the zipper in but that's beside the point so if you would like that the key word for this one will be sunflower yeah all right so i think from here um we'll plan to be back in a couple of weeks probably near the end of the month and share yes. some progress between now and then we have some fun stuff going on yes we do yes we do um you want to talk about where we're headed this week? This week we are heading to Shipshawana for our semi-annual quilt retreat. We're going with about nine other friends. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, usually there's 100, uh, 99 women there. But this year uh, people still are not coming and everything. So there's only going to be about 65. But we're very well spaced. And um, we're, it's been great. We yeah. went in the fall and we had a wonderful time. We, we get in there Wednesday about 3 o'clock and we sew until Sunday morning. And it's just so much fun. Yeah. And I actually have all my stuff. I found several projects that I'd forgotten about, yeah. like a block of the month from 2004 <laughs> um, <laughs> that was hiding. Yeah. But yeah, so I have stuff cut up and I'm ready to go, sort of. And yeah. so we're leaving Wednesday for that and that'll be fun. And we're really looking forward to going. Yeah. And we'll, maybe we'll do a quickie while we're up there just yeah. to show you what we're doing and and uh, that kind or of we'll stuff. record some segments and then yeah. put them together and post it when we get home. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know that the Wi-Fi in the hotel will support. Uh, oh, it the may upload, not. Yeah, but yeah, not. yeah, but we'll we'll try and take some videos and some pictures so you can see what we're up to there. Yeah. And then um, I think the last thing we wanted to mention is that I had said something in one of our recent videos about maybe doing a Biscornu stitch along because I had bought a couple of Biscor new patterns, but I have not made them yet. So we have decided we're gonna do that in August. That's when my birthday is. So, okay, I decided that we're gonna do it in August um, in celebration of my birthday. So if you have a Biscor new pattern, pull it out, start getting your linen, your threads together. If you don't have one, time to go shopping. Um, and as we get closer, we'll share details and a hashtag and things like that. But we're looking forward to, I think, both of us doing our first yes. Discord new. <laughs> yes. I've seen them. I think they're pretty. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mind the stitching part. It's the finishing. It's that, the finishing that, that's that going to be just, a challenge. You know, yeah. I thought I would have more finishes today, but I kept pushing that to the bottom of my list of to-do things. And all of yeah. a sudden this morning, I was like, I'm sitting here stitching and I should be finishing. Well, I guess I'll just keep stitching. Yeah. So maybe we'll have some finishes next time. Yeah. We'll at least have quilting projects yeah. finished next time. Yeah. Maybe. All right. Well, I think that's everything for today. Thanks again for coming back and staying with us. Yes. And we look forward to seeing you again in a few yes. weeks. Have a good week. Have a good month. Um, have fun with Mania if you're doing it. Not like I am, but like other people are really doing it. <laughs> And um, we wish you good health. Please get your shots so that you are vaccinated so we can stop this terrible virus from going around. And um, have a good stitching, quilting, whatever you do. Yeah. Time. Have fun. Thanks. Bye. Bye.